Picture a vast sea of golden sand that seems to stretch forever. This is the Sahara Desert, one of the hottest places on Earth, covering an area roughly the size of the United States and spanning many countries in North Africa. While its dunes and wildlife have a special kind of beauty, the Sahara's extreme climate can be harsh for people, plants, and animals. Now, there is a plan that could cost up to $100 billion to make parts of this desert greener and more livable for the millions of people who live near it. To understand why such a plan might be needed, it helps to see how deserts can expand over time. Deserts usually get very little rainfall, so plants and trees struggle to survive. Without enough vegetation to hold the soil in place, winds can blow sand farther out, taking over fields and even villages. Many parts of North Africa have experienced this problem, forcing communities to abandon farms and move elsewhere. The $100 billion plan is not a single project. It is an umbrella of different proposals often led by multiple countries, supported by international groups. Part of it involves planting millions of trees in a long band across the desert's edges. Others propose creating barriers of shrubs or grasses to stop sand from drifting onto farmland. In addition, the plan includes digging wells, building irrigation systems, and harnessing the sun's energy to pump water from underground. Overall, it seeks to bring water and new greenery to the Sahara in ways that could restore farmland and support local communities. One well-known element of this effort is the Great Green Wall, a pledge by North African countries to grow a long stretch of vegetation, trees, bushes, and crops across thousands of kilometers. The goal is to form a natural barrier that prevents the desert from creeping outward, while also trapping moisture in the soil and offering shelter to local wildlife. Planting so many trees requires a lot of money and ongoing care, which is why estimates for a broader initiative to save parts of the Sahara hover around $100 billion. But the Great Green Wall is only one piece of the puzzle. Many experts think improving water systems might have an even greater impact. They suggest building solar-powered pumps and pipelines to access groundwater deep below the sand. In some regions, there is talk of desalinating ocean water and transporting it inland through pipes or canals. These projects are expensive, needing power, special equipment, and trained workers. Yet their supporters believe that consistent water supplies would allow forests, gardens, and farms to thrive. Why spend so much on a desert? One reason is that millions of people live on or near the Sahara. They rely on farming and raising animals, but as the desert spreads, it threatens their fields, water sources, and way of life. Making the Sahara greener could stabilize food supplies, create jobs, and slow the need for people to leave their homes. Another reason is the desert's abundant sunshine, which could be used to generate renewable energy. Large solar farms might power the new pumps and also provide electricity for nearby communities. Still, there are real challenges. Simply planting a tree in the desert is easy. Keeping it alive is difficult. Trees need regular watering, which is always scarce. Different regions have their own rules and local concerns, and many areas face political or security issues. Large desalination plants or solar projects might also harm local habitats if not managed correctly. Then there is the matter of working with local communities and respecting their traditions. People living in the Sahara have long adapted to harsh conditions by moving with their animals or farming near oases. A big international plan must include their input and knowledge, or it risks failure. The $100 billion would be spread over many years, covering tree planting, solar farms, irrigation systems, worker training, roads, and more. Some say that the cost of doing nothing would be even bigger. Whole regions could become unlivable, forcing more migration to cities. This could strain resources and break families' ties to their land. Another idea being discussed is building channels or pipelines to move water from rivers or lakes into the desert. Such engineering feats are difficult and expensive, especially under the desert's scorching sun. Even so, many believe that bold steps are necessary to meet the Sahara's challenges. Supporters of these plans argue that careful research and planning can make them work, pointing to other regions where deserts have been partly reclaimed. There is also talk of growing plants that require less water, such as desert grasses or cacti, which can keep sand from blowing away. Over time, they can improve the soil. Once the land is healthier, farmers might try growing food crops or other useful plants. 
scientists might set up research centers along the desert's edge to test which methods are most effective for planting trees, using water wisely, and practicing sustainable farming. Locals could learn new techniques, making them active partners rather than just recipients of outside aid. Not everyone is convinced that this $100 billion plan is the best approach. Critics point to past efforts in other areas where large-scale projects ran out of money or faced setbacks. They suggest smaller community-based methods might work better than a grand, one-size-fits-all approach. However, supporters of the massive plan argue that the desert is so large and the problem so serious that only a coordinated strategy, involving many countries, can succeed. Regardless of the debates, most people agree that the land must be cared for. The Sahara is home to gazelles, desert foxes, reptiles, and insects, all adapted to scorching heat and scarce water. Any major program to green the desert must also protect these creatures. The hope is that by replanting trees and managing water carefully, people and wildlife alike will benefit from a healthier environment. In the future, this $100 billion vision may prove to be more than just planting trees. It will likely involve advanced technology, international teamwork, respect for local cultures, and new ways of using the desert's resources. If even parts of the plan succeed, it could offer fresh farmland, stable communities, and a model of how humans can reclaim harsh landscapes. Yet it will take many years to see progress. Seeds do not grow into trees overnight. Massive pipes and solar farms demand construction, maintenance, and skilled teams. And all of this requires large sums of money and long-term commitment. Whether the Sahara will truly be changed by human hands is uncertain. The desert has existed for thousands of years, shaped by natural forces. People have found ways to make deserts productive in other parts of the world, but it remains to be seen if the same can be done in the Sahara on such a vast scale. The real question is whether governments, scientists, local communities, and investors can cooperate, respecting the desert's balance while trying to improve it. At present, smaller pilot projects are underway. Engineers are testing pumps, local leaders are teaching water conservation, and volunteers are planting trees in formerly barren areas. It will require great patience and collaboration to bring about lasting changes. But the dream of saving parts of the Sahara remains a powerful idea, inspiring hope for a future where this mighty desert can sustain both people and nature.